Hello there. I wanted to read you one of my videos I did some time back on IMU calibration. When I did it last time it was on the Phantom 3. Although the process is the same for the Phantom 4, I just thought I'd go over it again, make some improvements on, compared to the one I did last time. Now, what is the IMU calibration? Basically we are calibrating the sensors inside the aircraft that tell it the position it's in. The integral measuring unit is what tells the aircraft that it's flat or it's at an angle. So it's constantly measuring the aircraft's position in relation to gravity, basically, is the easiest way to explain it. So it can measure the aircraft if it's there, 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 there. It's measuring how level it is. So you have to calibrate the IMU so it knows where level is. Otherwise, if it doesn't know where level is, how can it know to put itself level? Why do we do this? Well, when you get your Phantom, it would have been calibrated at the factory, but since doing that, it's been through transit, it's been through couriers before it's got delivered to you. It is highly, highly recommended before you use your brand new aircraft, or if you are having any problems, such as gimbal horizon issues, um, not flying straight, losing height, anything strange with the aircraft, perform an IMU calibration. It really does solve a lot of problems. Now, but to do the air calibration, you need a couple of things. You need a perfectly level surface to put the aircraft on. It is no good calibrating it on an angle like that because it won't know where level is. You need to find a perfectly level surface in your home. That might be a kitchen tile on your floor, your kitchen worktop. Get a small level, find somewhere that is perfectly level. Now, I go quite excessive with this. I actually have a table set up, which I spend far too much time putting shims of cardboard underneath to get it exactly right. But I do a lot of IMU calibrations for varying reasons, so it's easier for me to have something I can go straight to without having to go looking for it. However, for yourself, make sure you find somewhere to get it perfectly level. The second thing is we need to get it as cold as we possibly can before the calibration. The reason for this is the IMU is heated, so the second we turn on the aircraft, it will begin to warm up the IMU. To get a really good calibration, you need the IMU to see as wide a temperature range as possible. So, if the aircraft's just been flying, that IMU is already warm. If you turn it on and then just go calibrate, you're only going to calibrate in a very narrow temperature window. What we actually want is it to have a really wide temperature window to calibrate in. So, the trick to this is cooling the aircraft down before you do the calibration. Now, I'm not talking about putting it in your fridge. You'll see some people have online have put it in the fridge, in the freezer. It isn't necessary. It's all relative to your ambient temperature. Get it as cold as you can around you. So, on the patio outside late at night for 20 minutes is ideal. Somewhere where you've got the temperature a good few degrees below your normal ambient. If you are in an area of the world where it doesn't get cold at night, there are a lot of places like that, a couple of things you can do is put it in front of some air conditioning for 5-10 minutes, in the car, in front of the vents with the air conditioning on. I've actually done that myself in the middle of summer when it's been quite warm in the UK, as really as it happens. Um, but yeah, you need to just chill the aircraft down with the battery out. So as I said, ideally on the patio or somewhere for 20 minutes. Whilst that's chilling, get your tablet, your phone hooked up to the controller and turned on. Because what we want to do is, when we bring the aircraft in, we need to do the calibration as soon as we turn it on. Because the second we hit that power button, that IMU will begin to warm up. And we need to start that calibration as soon as we can so it sees the widest possible temperature range. So we'll think now that we've got our level surface, We've got the aircraft that's outside in the patio chilling. We're ready to bring it in. So what we will do is open the DJI Go app and get it ready to go. So we will get it on the sensor screen. So what you want to do is go into general settings, main controller setup, down to advanced settings, 
click on sensors and we're on the IMU screen. Now, there are two IMUs on the Phantom 4, unlike the Inspire and the P3 which only has one, but don't worry about it, the calibration process is just the same. You've got a calibrate IMU button there. So, as I said, we want to bring the aircraft in, it's been chilled outside, we want to put the battery in, and we're going to press that calibrate IMU button as soon as we've turned the aircraft on. Now what we may notice is sometimes it actually boots us out of that menu. One of the tricks I always do is put it into ATTI mode. First, make sure you're in ATTI. So it does help, it doesn't bring up one of the screens that normally pops up in front of you. So put your lever to the full left hand side. We're on the screen ready. We'll turn the aircraft on. Now it may actually kick us out of this screen, so we need to get ready to get back in there. But as soon as the craft connects to the controller, you want to hit that Calibrate IMU button. There we go, it's connected, and what you would want to do then is hit Calibrate IMU, and then hit Start Calibration. Now I'm not going to do that now because this bench isn't level. But you want to do it within one or two seconds of turning the aircraft on. It will then begin to calibrate the IMU. It'll take, I think it's between three and five minutes, something like that. Very important that you do not touch the aircraft when it's calibrating. I'm just gonna turn it off because of the fans. Obviously, don't turn it off when it's calibrating, but for this video I just have. But yeah, do not touch the aircraft when it's calibrating. It doesn't matter if it's near anything metal for the IMU calibration. It's not the compass, it's not affected by any metal work around it. So you don't have to worry about any metal around it. You only have to make sure that it's A, perfectly level, and B, nothing is touching it when it's doing the calibration. Wait for the calibration to complete. Once it's done, the next thing to do whilst it's still on that level surface is go back into the menu, click on Gimbal and perform Gimbal Auto Calibration. That will then calibrate the Gimbal on the same level surface. That is it for the IMU calibration, as straightforward as that. A couple of points to remember is it is heated so you want to start it as soon as you turn the aircraft on. Put it into ATTI, so full left hand side on the switch, on the flight mode switch. That stops the menus popping up when you perform the calibration. If it's in GPS mode, when you turn the aircraft on, if I do it now, it may show you. Although I'm not in the IMU screen, it will actually chuck up the status menu and kick us out of the one we were in. Or not. It did it to me earlier. It's always good when technology fights back, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so that's the reason I always say to put it in ATTI. Trust me on that one, it does work. That's it, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I hope it's helped somebody. Thank you very much.